everybody. Mm -hmm. Welcome to another episode of Get Ready. And uh, excited today to bring you my friend, Tammy Anderson Ward, who uh, met years ago. We've been uh, chatting back and forth for some time, and I'm looking very much forward to uh, being on the stage at her Energy Healing Conference coming up. And uh, But for right now, she's here on my stage. Welcome Ooh. to the show, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me here. You're awesome. So we were chatting about the whole idea of rewriting your story. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how we, we get into our lives and sometimes we feel like, well, this is how the book is going. And, uh, you know, and the ending's already written. And uh, that's just not the case, is it? No, it's definitely not. You can rewrite your story at any time. I love it. Yeah. And I think the reason why I'm so passionate about that is because I've had different things that have happened in my life where I just want to completely like, can I do a redo? Can I do it? Like, you know, get a, a complete, like start over kind of thing in my life, you know, and like you're driving down a road and you just want to have a full on, can I create my own detour here? You know? <laughs> and obviously there are things that we want to go easy on that. It's like, you know, if I'm on the road and it's like, you know what? I'm not going home to my family today. I think that I move right. to another city and start over completely. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know your family is important to you. So that would be one thing. That... Of course. I have eight kids actually. And yeah, they're very important to me. <laughs> but so, so what do you... Where do you find is one of the best places where uh, where we can rewrite, and 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 how are the ways that you like to go about showing people how to rewrite their story? So um, I'm just thinking of a few times when I've needed to do that, um, so that I could give you like specific examples. And I, I was like, oh, I, I'm not going to get so vulnerable that. I'm going to get choked up, but it's like, you know what, <laughs> why? But I feel like my heart's taking me there. So here we go. Um, when I was 17, I, I actually uh, was addicted to meth and um, it was crazy because my senior year of high school, I only slept a total of five nights, my whole senior year of high school. And it was because I was living with my dad at the time and my dad was not just doing meth himself. He wasn't just doing drugs himself. He was also selling it. And so I literally could get however much I wanted. And I remember he'd say, only do this much because you'll probably die if you do more. <laughs> and then I would go and... Life lessons from dad. Hashtag life lessons. <laughs> Thanks. <Dad. laughs> um, interestingly enough, maybe this is why it's on my heart right now is because this month, um, in fact, in one week, um, it'll be my 26 year recovery date um, from meth. And I just feel so I've been feeling so much gratitude. And my dad, I just saw him this last weekend, and he's been clean for 25 years this as of this July. Awesome. And so together, we, I guess we like rewrote that part of our story, you know, we took that detour. And, and that's, I guess that's the kind of um, get ready that I am really passionate about and what I like to talk about. And, um, and then there's been other times as well, like, um, I, experienced a traumatic brain injury and I was having debilitate, debilitating panic attacks and it was causing me to not be able to even drive. And I'm a 44 year old woman. Like I'm an independent, strong woman. You know what I mean? Like I own my own business. I, I, like I said, I have eight kids. Like I help other people, but then I was finding myself in this position where I couldn't really drive and it was affecting my confidence so much. So I feel really grateful. Actually tapping has been one of those things that's really helped me um, at two different times in my life with driving. Um, but then I was also able to be humble enough to go out and get help. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like writing that part of my story too. So sometimes things happen that are out of outside of your control too. And then it's like, okay, now I have a choice from here moving forward, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a, and that's a great point in terms of how we rewrite things is rewriting the characters, not just the scenario, but the character It's like, okay, so the lead character in this story uh, doesn't ask for help. Um, let me get out my eraser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the lead character in my story is really good about asking for the help they need. Yes, definitely. And, you know, also like, I think in the past, this is kind of embarrassing to admit, but in the past, I think I've actually had judgment against people who couldn't drive. And then I found myself in that position. It's like, well, you know what? Karma just slapped me right. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I get it. Okay. I didn't understand. And now I really, I do from a different perspective. And it's taught me different lessons and in different ways. But those are two very specific examples on how to, you know, get ready to rewrite your story. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and if we pay attention, life will show us. Here's where you could do some, you know, life is our editor. <laughs> it's like, so this part of the story, is this really, uh, which would you want to leave in here or do you want to uh, yeah. edit this out and, and and make some changes here? Yeah. And, and I'm really grateful that we can do that quite honestly, because <laughs> yeah. if you, if you thought that everything was just like written in stone and you couldn't change it, that would be challenging and actually probably leave you feeling kind of hopeless, but knowing that you can, and that, you know, we're made of energy and we can change things. We have our own consciousness. Like that's pretty powerful. Yeah. yeah quite the, empowering. <laughs> the, the infinite potential that is within us and yeah, that, that tendency to look at, well, here's the story so far. So I can only make so many changes. It's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> there mm -hmm. you can you, you can go from poverty to wealth you can go from addiction to mm -hmm. sobriety and, mm -hmm. and recovery and and it's like oh my goodness <laughs> yeah i didn't think this this was in the cards it's like oh no almost anything is in the cards yeah i'm really grateful for that like another thing that um has really helped me is like knowing that like our voice, the sound that comes to our vocal cords um, is, is really powerful. And I always tell people like your voice is the most powerful voice in the entire universe to you because it matches the same frequency as your subconscious voice. So, you know, like this story that we tell ourselves really makes a difference. I recently was turned on to a song by the singer, um, and songwriter Trevor Hall called The Old Story. Have you ever heard that song? Oh, oh my gosh. It's so, so good. It's so good. I was just listening to it with my 16-year-old son while we were driving the other day. We live out in the country and we were going for a drive. And and I said to him, I said, listen to this song, bro. We got we call each other bro. You know, this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> listen to this song, bro. And and uh he listened to it and he goes, that's like kind of a deep song. And I said, what do you, what do you think about the story that you tell yourself about you? And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, you know, like, who are you to you? And he goes, all right, let me think about this. And he goes, I don't know. I'm just a kid trying to figure out life. And I said, no, no, no. I said, take, take like your consciousness, like out of your brain and out of your body and out of your car for out of the car for a minute and just observe yourself who are you? Like if you were from somebody else looking up from the outside in, what is that story? And he goes, oh crap. I just saw myself differently. And I was like, Hmm, this perspective shift was really powerful because he's like, well, I wouldn't want somebody else to think that. And I said, oh, so like, let's talk about this story, you know? So there was two perspectives. The one that he saw from his eyeballs looking out right from his lens from his body he was like I'm just some kid trying to figure out life but looking from the outside in he's like he goes that story is different and I said what is that what is that like and he goes that kid doesn't have anything figured out and he just keeps making lots of mistakes and I said oh that's rough I said okay how are we going to fix this and he goes how about I just you know, not put so much pressure on myself, but realize that like, I can believe in myself. Like he's the one who came up with these solutions and, and the detour himself, you know, just by, but he never even seen it from the other perspective. Isn't that so interesting? It is. And it's, and it's so uh, prevalent because 
I mean, and it's so interesting being your son because you were aware of these things and you, and you, you know, and so he's in an environment where there's, you know, at least some opening to that, where a lot of people don't even have that, that idea. It's like, no, I am just a, a kid, a person or whatever, you know, trying to figure things out and making mistakes. And, uh, and that's, and that's all there is. And that's what it's going to be and no, no changes. And the story is going to keep going like that. So I, yeah. I think what that did for him to see a different perspective like that was to kind of take a step back from a timeline of what's happened thus far. And does he like that? Does he want to keep going down that route yeah. or, or is there some room for, you know, improvement? And of course he's, uh, I asked him, I said, like, how's your self-acceptance and stuff? How are you doing with that? And he's like, you know, I could probably work on that. And I said, cool. How can I assist you? How can I support you? And he's, he's kind of, he's kind of, uh, been through some rough stuff, you know? And he said to me, well, actually, mom, one of the reasons why I come in and I hug you every night and I tell you, I love you is he goes, I want to make sure that you never forget it. And I'm like, well, you know what? I mean, it's, it's crazy. He's a 16 year old young man. Right. And when he comes in, it's like, I'm going to bed and he comes in and he, it's like, he's tucking me in, you know, he, and he literally, he's like, here, mom. And he hugs me, you know? And anyway, it's really cool. Um, but he knows that I believe in him, that I got his back. Like, and I wasn't even planning on talking about my son, obviously, but like, I think it's pretty profound as parents, you know, we, we see ourselves one way, but then what our kids can tell us is pretty, it's like that perspective, allowing that different perspective to come into, you know, I thought I was doing a really crappy job. And then he's telling me about, you know, the thing that really matters is that I see him you know, that we allow our kids to be witnessed and, and seen, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful because so many kids aren't. Yeah. I really appreciate him and his willingness and his openness to talk. In fact, he even said, Hey, I know a couple people that you should talk to. <laughs> they could really use your weirdoness is what he calls it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> you know, anything your parents do is uncool. And if what your parents do is a little off the norm, then it's even less cool. I mean, I've been Un hosting until... healing conferences for 10 years. <laughs> so since he was six years old, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. But obviously some of it's sinking in. I'm really proud of him. I mean, everybody's got... You know, like uh, just like life, it kind of goes up and down from different times. But he knows that like there's nothing that he could ever do that would make me love him less because, you know, yeah, I I do got his back. You know what I mean? And and yeah, people do make mistakes. You know what I mean? And like when you're a kid, you're like allowed to figure yourself out. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. well, and that's the thing is changing that perspective of, you know, a kid who doesn't hasn't got things figured out as I'm a kid who's figuring things out and uh and that's how it is that's that's science this is how science works is you you try things out you experiment mm -hmm. and you find this works and this doesn't work and we're so caught up in I'm not allowed to make any mistakes if you can't make any mistakes you can't learn anything yeah that's true and, that really uh, hinders your learning yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like that whole growth and fixed mindset, you know, the difference, the comparison between the two. And no, no story is page one. Everything was perfect. Page two, still perfect. Page three, continuing to be perfect. And in the end, it was all perfect in the end. <laughs> and it was all perfect in the end. <laughs> actually some of the best stories and movies and books out there right that we're reading like if there was literally no sort of what's the story right absolutely there's always conflict of, of some kind and and the overcoming of it and uh 
but that's where we we want to do the rewrite of where it's like okay there's the conflict and i think it's just be conflict you know the book is there's conflict page two conflict page it's like no no this is where you get to do the rewrite yeah yeah <laughs> and then will. suddenly the hero realized <laughs> yeah well i so i really do like the whole idea of rewriting your story at any time and i like i you know, I'm talking about like shifting and changing things so that you feel that inner peace and that joy and that fulfillment. Yeah. And, you know, as we go through life, I feel like that changes so much. Like I'm only 44. There's so much I don't know. There's so much I haven't experienced. And I remember in 2005, I wrote a bucket list item for myself that it was had about 20 different items on it. And as it neared the end, I was afraid I was going to die. I mean, I literally was like, I got to keep making this list. So I love that because then it's like you're writing the next chapter, you know, what else do you want to keep experiencing? And if you need to, you know, kind of test measure and adjust right for that next chapter, then you can. So I absolutely love that. Well, and, and what you're saying earlier about your son in terms of how do you see yourself from the outside and what do you want to see? And so perhaps one of the most important things of rewriting the story is rewriting your story about yourself. Right. And, you know, with the bucket list things, some of them are external things. And so what about me is yeah. on my bucket list? You know, being being healthier, being more uh, successful in this, that, or the other thing, being more loving, being able to see people with more compassion. It's like, ooh, that's a good bucket list item. <laughs> I love that, actually. That was really good. Yeah. And then even just like choosing a, a sort of like an intention for that, for that next chapter. That's really awesome. Actually, I was working with a medicine woman recently and she asked me for a characteristic and I told her, I want to be braver. I want to be bolder. And then it was interesting because where she took me was a completely different area. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to go down that deep, dark wound. <laughs> you know, I'd rather go over here and she's like but you said <laughs> you know I anyway I just I love it because sometimes when you ask for something like that like you want to have more compassion well, I don't know if I'd want to ask for more compassion <laughs> never mind <laughs> last time I asked for that I ended up no I'm just kidding you literally do learn more compassion as you go throughout life though like how can you not knock wood, you know, hope, hope hopefully <laughs> we certainly yeah. see people who become less compassionate and, it, and, and we want to, you know, find that compassion in ourselves to look at that and go, wow, what's going on for that person that that's, that their fear is driving them away from compassion and you know, the compassion that you would hope would come with age and wisdom. And instead it's getting more closed-minded and more scared and uh and i think that's one of the things that can sometimes stop us from rewriting our story is that fear of you know uh, i'm not wild about the way the story's going but something else would be even worse it would be even scarier and so i'm gonna you know stay the course and it's like okay but but I, there's the possibility it could be anything you can yeah. rewrite it. It's not like you, you get to choose what you rewrite it as. Yeah. I love that. Well, I'm, I'm just in my mind, I've been like recapping. Okay. Like how do I take what he's saying and make this like a practical, I'm going to do this. And I was just kind of seeing myself put like a, a little note card. I have these note cards I put on my vision board um, that are like my favorite color, you know, hot pink and, um, and I'll write like a, one or two words or sometimes just a brief phrase, you know, on there. And so I just could see myself writing these attributes that I'm aspiring for more. So that would be like a practical way to do it. And then maybe even, you know, in meditation, kind of like thinking about them and kind of pondering on, on those words and that vibration and seeing what that feels like. I, I have a, I have a poster of it that I created um, years ago. It just has in giant letters "I am" and then has a whole bunch of words around it. Awesome. You know, like understanding, serenity, excitement, you know, courage, things like that. Yeah, yeah. It's that you know, 
yeah, really that idea of rewriting your story. And the most important thing is rewriting the, the, the lead character and going, who do, who do I want the hero of my story to be? And, and if I'm not happy with how things are going, it's like, maybe I need to rewrite the character. Cause if I keep the character as they are, they're still going to keep doing the <laughs> going down that same path. Who do I need to be in order to create this outcome? This new rewrite. That's brilliant. Do you have brilliant written next to I am over there? Cause uh, I have genius up there. Okay. There you go. You're a genius. Well, channel, well. channel for genius. That's one of the videos I have is being a channel for genius. It, uh, through us, not by us. <laughs> that is awesome. I like that. Cool. That is awesome. Well, and, and we've got this, uh, I, I know this, this will be out here for perpetuity, but for folks seeing it right now in 2024, uh, May and June, we've got the, uh, the energy healing conference coming up, which would be a great place to come and rewrite your story. <laughs> uh, yes. It's, it's fantastic because no matter really what you're interested in, there's really something for everyone and it's family friendly too. So you're welcome to bring, you know, your teens and kids of all ages to the energy healing conference. There's actually really cool experiences, you know, not just lecture format, but experiences like, like you, what you're going to be doing. It'll at be the experiential. <laughs> I love that. Actually. I mean, I feel like those classes are so much more popular because people have been hearing about stuff for a long time, but doing it, it's different. You know, it's just, it really is. So I was going to say, my, my brand name is tap with Brad, not sit and listen to Brad. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> awesome. Well, and, and there's, so there's these activities, but there's also uh, this vendor hall that has over 150 vendors. Wow. So you can actually go and get services in addition to just shopping for cool products and unique, you know, gifts and stuff like that, but you can do a whole lot more. So yeah, really awesome. excited about it. Thank you. I am excited for about some... it. Uh, I'm excited about this whole idea of getting ready to rewrite your life. And I'm grateful to you for uh, for coming up with that and and for your vulnerability and sharing the uh, the profound rewrites oh, that, that you've expect. done. <laughs> so that's yeah. A, sometimes you can do those profound. Yeah, very inspiring. Yeah, thank you. That's that's a big. Thank you. I even have this little plaque in my house that says, write your own story. And then it says, comma, babe. <laughs> I love it. So that's the message to you, the viewer today. Write your own story, babe. <laughs> Just got back from New Orleans where everybody says, babe. It's like, hey, babe. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> I bring it up. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being a part of it. It's going to be awesome. My pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, for coming on Get Ready. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Awesome.